just fool us in so many ways and it's just time that we really see what's going on and not be tricked by their lies or their marketing. The animal products cause a lot of disease in the body. Nothing in your outer world should affect you because your inner world is such at peace with who you are. My friend Reslin wants to start a raw vegan cooking channel on YouTube with me. So he's coming over today and we're gonna film some recipes. And this just came at the perfect time because like I was telling you guys, I wanna start incorporating more raw foods into my diet. But when I was going online and finding recipes, it was a lot of foods that I don't like. So I was like, okay, I don't think I'm gonna be able to eat raw yet. I'm gonna hold off on that and wait till I start to like more food. But with Ruslan wanting to start this channel with me, it's just going to give me that little push to start eating this food. And also Ruslan eats a lot of raw food that I do like because when I've hung out with him, I always try his food and I'm like, oh, I actually like this, but I just don't know how to make it myself. So with him wanting to do this channel, it's gonna help me learn how to make the foods that I do like. And then by eating more raw foods, my taste buds are gonna start changing and then I'll start to like more foods that I am currently not liking now. So as we are teaching you guys these recipes, I'm also going to be learning right there with you guys. And today is the first day of spring, so everything is just so aligned. Everything is coming at the perfect time. And I also learned that um, springtime is the perfect time to detox. And when you're eating more raw foods, you are allowing your body to detox a lot better. But I'm so excited to start this today and just start this new journey into eating more raw foods. We just finished filming how to make raw vegan chocolate and it was so easy. So easy, like literally what, five minutes? Not even five yeah, minutes. Yeah, not even minutes. five minutes. Yeah. And I love chocolate, <laughs> so I'm excited about Guilt -free this. Guilt-free chocolate. Guilt-free chocolate. It's actually healthy for you because cacao has a lot of benefits. Yeah. We go all else or something. Yeah. I'm gonna miss you all well. Let's hope your summer goes well. But when the night gets late, I'm too far down. Okay, now we made tacos. Look at these tacos, guys. Hit the spot. I thought I could make these for the rest of my life. This I is so easy. I was literally making it at some point. I was making it like three times a week. Yeah, I would do it. I thought I'd do it every day. <laughs> it's really I can literally eat it every day though. It's really refreshing. Mm -hmm. Good life, good health, good wealth. Bet you never had mango on your taco. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. I'm not taking the credit because I did not create this. I did put sunflower seeds though in it. That's the only difference. The chocolate's done. We put almonds in it. My friends made this. And it's healthy. That's so crazy. All this stuff is healthy. No one can tell you who you are but you. And anyone's opinion of you doesn't matter. And it's also none of your business what anyone's opinion of you is. And if anyone's ever talking shit about you, then let them. Who cares? They're the one who's sitting there being better talking about you, not you. You're the one over here thriving, living your best life. So let the haters talk. Let the haters be the motivators. <laughs> and you don't need to explain yourself to anyone. Only you know what you've been through. Only you know how great you you are not everyone is going to see your value not everyone is going to appreciate you and respect you the way that you would like and that's okay as long as you are respecting yourself and valuing yourself that's all that matters and if someone isn't respecting you or seeing your value then walk away from them move on there will be people who will see your value and you can only see in others what you see in yourself. So if somebody isn't seeing you the way you believe that you should be seen, then just know, okay, well, they just don't feel that way about themselves. Only a great can see another great. But at the end of the day, all that truly matters is how you view yourself. So make sure you are doing things that allows you to view yourself in a positive way. And if you don't see yourself in a positive way, then you should probably change your habits to something better and do better things so you can see yourself in better ways. It is a shitty feeling when people are talking shit about you or not valuing you But it's good to just get to a point where you love yourself so much that nothing else affects you Nothing in your outer world should affect you because your inner world is such at peace with who you are and this does take time 
it does take a lot of work and recently i have been realizing how all of the work is worth it all of the tears the spiritual warfare that goes on in your mind we also need to realize that um sometimes when the devil can't get to you in your physical world the devil will get to you in your mental in your mind so if you are having battles in your mind with negative thoughts just know like okay the devil is trying to get me in my mind right now so let me be stronger than this and let me know what's going on because spiritual warfare is a thing it's important to be aware of it so you can overcome it and just try to fill your head with positive thoughts when those negative thoughts are coming in i know it can be difficult but just try to direct your energy somewhere else also, you gotta just let the time pass because it won't last forever, you know, nothing does. But back to what I was saying is all of the tears are worth it, all of the good moments are worth it, all of the staying in and missing out on having fun with friends is worth it. Everything is worth it because the person you get to become after all of the self-growth you've done is amazing. You built a strong foundation for yourself that you get to stand on. No one gets to take that away from you and that is the ultimate prize. Not even the superficial goals that we we are going after in in the reason why we're even going on the self-growth journey but i've been realizing how the prize really is who you become to get the goals that you want i'm pretty sure i've said this before but it's so true i finally got to see up to episode four completed roman finished editing them and i just got so proud of myself i can't even believe that i am who i am today but it's also like of course I am because I put in so much work, but it's just an amazing feeling and I just want everyone to experience this because we all are capable of becoming great. It is a lot of work and it is a long journey and patience is required. I struggle with having patience the most, but seeing results is the most gratifying feeling ever and just knowing who you are is also the best thing you can do for yourself figure out who you are that's something that i can't stress to you guys enough figure out who you are what you like what you don't like and to figure out who you are you need to experience things you need to make mistakes making mistakes is more beneficial than making the right decision because you get to learn the most from mistakes you don't learn as much when you're making all the right decisions and it hurts to make mistakes oh man am i hard on myself when i make mistakes and does my mind just tear me down when i make mistakes but also it's good because by being so hard on myself i get to keep elevating and becoming a better version of myself and this message just came to me this morning i just woke up and i just put my camera up because i just felt like i really needed to share this with you guys um but i love you guys i'm going to a movie premiere later tonight for this movie that i cannot wait to see it's called christspiracy it's a vegan movie the guys who made cowspiracy and all of those movies made this one and so I'm gonna bring you guys along with me tonight. Wrestlin recently saw it and he couldn't stop talking about it. So I will definitely be updating you guys on what I think of the movie. But I love you guys. Be great. When I get home, baby, gon' try that low. I don't like a nice call. White gold on me and it's shining like Don't waste my time. Honey, miss calls, you cry. Why you always hit my line with the same old line? Pretty girls wanna have fun. Get drunk, get fucked up. Don't waste my time. Honey, miss calls, you cry. Why you always hit my line with the same old line? One of the most important things we discovered, as you were about to see, is that there has been a powerful and determined censorship of spiritual truths and religious teachings that goes back 2,000 years. That censorship has persisted throughout the millennia, and it has brought us to the present day world of disconnect and war, and the loss of humanity, empathy, and compassion. The fact of the matter is, whether you're a Christian or not, or even if you don't believe in Jesus, your entire life, everyone in the Western world's entire life is affected by the church. Christianity is the largest religion in the world. There's 2.3 billion Christians worldwide. 65% of the country is Christian. 88% of members of Congress are Christian. And every single president in the history of the United States was a Christian or believed in God. In America, we don't worship government. We worship God.
And of course, it had momentous consequences. It was that act that precipitated, especially, if not exclusively, his trial and his execution. Wow. But well, what did that have to do with animals? Well, what were they buying and selling? Well, it's not chocolate. They're buying and selling animals for sacrifice. I had no idea there was a specific historical event that led directly to Jesus' crucifixion four days earlier, known as... Den of Thieves. A den of... A den of... Den of Thieves. But sermons today only mention Jesus being mad about the money. No more exchanging money. He poured out the coins of the money changers and he overturned their tables. But looking into the past, there were hidden clues. Because the buying and selling of sacrificial animals was what sustained the temple. The truth is that the temple at the time of Jesus was a mass slaughterhouse. It was hard to believe one of the world's most sacred temples for all Western religions was a slaughterhouse. Yet historical records do show millions of animals being sacrificed and priests wading up to their knees in blood. The truth of the story is Jesus Christ was striking at the root of all there is that is evil, of oppression of people, of the constructive war, in one fell swoop. He was crucified for disrupting the culture of the time, which was killing animals for profit and eating them for food. If that's true though, then why did Jesus call them thieves? And he turned over their tables. He cried out, you've made my father's house a den of thieves. Well, in that case, he shouldn't have driven out all the animals. He drove them out of the temple cattle sheep and all jesus would not allow anyone hearing these animals in and out he shuts the temple down for the whole day and everybody's listening what is this guy going to do next if it were really about killing animals it seems like you wouldn't call them thieves you'd call them violent or killers. jesus christ did not really call the temple a den of thieves Find out the true translation of the word thieves, and you'll know what Jesus was calling them. To finally see, once and for all, what Jesus' true intentions were when he stormed the temple that led to his crucifixion, we found a leading scholar in biblical Hebrew translation. And says, this is my father's house, it should be a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of robbers. So we've heard he called them thieves, and now you're saying robbers. So what is the real Hebrew translation for what Jesus called the priests in the temple? Right, let me have a look and see where it comes and what exactly it says. Yeah, so that's interesting. Yes, I, you know, I never realized that. That's a kind of aha moment. And what does the word priests mean? Um, another book. Well, we'll have to look up parites in the Hebrew dictionary as well. Parites, yes. A violent one. And that's what he called the priests doing the sacrifice? Yeah. So it's the killing then? It's ferocious, apparently. So not only did he sacrifice his life for humans, but to stop the killing of animals as well. Yeah, it is interesting. And it certainly raises a number of questions. On the eve before Jesus' crucifixion, he held his final protest, the Last Supper, which should have been centered around a Passover lamb. In the every night gospel, Jesus specifically rejected eating meat at the Passover. Jesus says, I have come to destroy the sacrifices, and if you do not cease from sacrificing, wrath will not cease from you. And he says, this is my meat, this bread. And this wine is my blood, so to speak, meaning this is all we need. We don't need the lamb. You know, if we look close enough, we can see the hints in paintings in scripture. It's just that it's easier to cover up the truth than to talk about it. about 
Jesus been covered up for 2,000 years? Because, of course, the meat eaters won. You know, as it's often been said, history is the province of the winners. <laughs> and now we're living with the consequences. And what do we know about the winners? What we do know is that Paul was fiercely anti vegetarian and his influence has undoubtedly influenced the direction of Christianity and especially during the first century. St. Paul is a Roman leader who spread Christianity to the masses, encouraged converts to eat meat, condemning the movement that did many by being forced by Roman soldiers to eat meat. And if they refused, they would kill them. Funny, many people don't know that Jesus had a brother James. And why is that? We have all of these additional sources. The main thing is his lifestyle. He doesn't eat meat, and he lived off what grew of itself. James, the brother of Jesus, was clearly a vegetarian, and he was head of the Jerusalem church. He's called the pillar of the church. The so-called pillar, as Paul says, because Paul didn't necessarily always agree with James. Paul, in fact, beat him, throwing him down the temple steps, which eventually led to a mob of priests stoning him to death. Eventually, they were all killed off. Over the argument of the consumption of animals, only years after their leader, Jesus, was crucified as a terrorist. The good, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A reversal of the traditional practice of shepherding who, who looks after the animals and then slaughters them. It is a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. What a radical line, isn't it? If Jesus was walking the earth now, the way he did, and for what he did, today, what do you think he'd be doing? Is there a right way to kill a beast? Just the fact that you treat blood on the streets? Jesus were to do the same whole kind of thing today as going into the temple, he'd be considered a terrorist. Threat. Our religious doctrine never made a profit. Souls of the innocent creation get adopted. Slit the throats of the lambs. See the nations gotta stop it. Pharisees writing out the temple. Slaughtering sheep while they're getting any bit. Flip the tapes. No intentions of being gentle. That's crazy. I'm getting mental on it. What Jesus did was actually an act of animal liberation. Unallowed what? For the cause to make credentials? Thou should not kill is the law. Let's make it simple. In 2004, the FBI designated animal rights movements the number one domestic terror threats in the country, despite the fact that neither of these movements has ever once physically injured a single person in this country, ever. Why you got a knife with the issue? How you take a life with the life that's within you? And you tell me why they got Christ deep within you? What's the cost of a soul? Check the price that's within you. Get a thief. After all that we had learned, it felt now the only choice was to stand up and take action. It felt daunting and dangerous to be considered a terrorist or face jail time, but we pushed forward and joined marches for the animals. When you look into someone's eyes, you're looking at their personhood. You're looking at their soul. And if you are really awake, you will only see your own deep innocence, which might be hidden from you. I see a being that desires to live as much as I do and has the right to do so. My life is that of an advocate for the most vulnerable living beings on earth. The basis of all religion, it is simply this, always be kind. Along this journey, I felt at times as if I was moving away from my faith. But what I now realize is that all the while I was actually moving closer to what it really means to be a Christ follower. And the one thing that unites all religions and spiritual traditions at the root is compassion for all beings. See, animals are not just beings. They have an anima, a life. They do something fundamentally spiritually important for us, and that is to take us out of ourselves, to give us a sense of wonder and awe, of the universe to see beyond the natural world to the spirit moving within it with which one can connect with which one can have a relationship which can indeed mediate the grace of god is that what you mean by spirituality we're actually speaking about a moment in which everyone sees that that same spark of divinity is in all beings 
whether they're winged or four-legged, or whether they're swimming in the sea. And one by one by one, we become those understanding, compassionate creatures, and we create a gigantic game of tag around the world. I'm talking about 10, 20 million prophets, masters on this earth, all being as Christ-like as Jesus, as the Buddha, as Prophet Muhammad, as any of the great masters that have ever lived. This is not the age of one great leader. This is the age of great leadership. And what I basically have to say to anybody watching this is tag, you're it. My second time watching it, and honestly it's worth watching second time as well because all these little details you get to catch, yeah. it's just mind blowing. This is the best documentary I've ever seen. I'm on, yeah. To break the ice, though, I have one question. Would Jesus eat the homies? <laughs> no! Huh? We just did Pierce Morgan this morning. <laughs> so, please, if you have it in you and if you've got that bite, just go like on comment sections and make sure that the truth is laid down kindly and as compassionately as you possibly can. Make sure that people know what this film really is because there can be misconceptions that we're bashing religion or that we're doing this or doing that and that's obviously not what's happening. So any chance you get when you see it and you have a moment to, to back it up, back it up. Thank and you. special thank you to Don't Eat the Homies, everybody. So first off, that movie was so good. I recommend you guys checking it out. It was very eye-opening. I wanted to share with you guys some of the reasons why I don't eat meat that's not for the ethical reasons. So first things first, if you look at our anatomy, our body is not designed to consume meat. We don't have sharp claws or sharp canines that allows us to tear into flesh like other animals do. And in order for us to go hunt down these animals, we have to make tools outside of ourselves to do so. While nature gives certain animals like a lion teeth and uh, claws to hunt down these animals naturally. Also, our intestines in our body are way too long for meat to go through them, whereas a lion has a lot shorter intestines, so the meat can go through a lot quicker. Meat also takes two days to process through our body, and the hyaluronic acid that's in our stomach isn't hot enough to break down the complex proteins that's in meat, which is why it takes so long for meat to process. We want to eat to cleanse, not to clog. And when meat is taking so long to get broken down, it is rotting and fermenting in your gut, which creates a belly. We like to call it fat but really you're just full of shit most people are constipated and you should be going to the bathroom every couple hours after you eat a meal fruits veggies seeds and nuts all only take a couple hours to get broken down and food needs to be able to be broken down utilized absorbed and eliminated i forgot to say another reason that goes with what i was already saying and that is that animal products cause a lot of disease in the body and i have a video that i want to show you guys that better explains this are eating large amounts of fats in your diet, you are significantly raising your risk for cancer. If you are a woman eating a lot of fat in your diet, and that's talking about the hidden fat in cheeses and meats, etc., you increase your risk of cancer of the breast. Here are some countries that are compared by how much fat is eaten versus how many women die of breast cancer. The Americans and the Dutch, with their big dairy industries, lead the way in not only fat consumption, they lead the way in breast cancer deaths. Thailand is a Buddhist country. They eat very little meat and dairy products. Breast cancers are so rare there if you find a case of it you report it at grand rounds when a man eats lots of animal fats those fats are turned into male hormones called androgens and androgens stimulate the prostate gland to get big in our society when a man reaches 60 or 70 and his prostate gland gets big his doctor says well it's just part of getting old no it's not that's 70 years of running androgen through that prostate gland no wonder that gland gets big and prostate cancer is the number one killer of men and if you compare countries of the world versus how much fat is eaten and how much men die of prostate 
cancer sorts out just the same way. The more fat that is eaten in a country, the more the men die of prostate cancer. And again, it's a very rare disease in Thailand where people eat rice and vegetables and traditional foods. Animal fats, they clog you up, they make you fat, and they increase your risk for a number of types of cancers. Now, I'm describing problems with eating animal flesh, and that includes chicken and fish. Fish has a tremendous amount of fat and cholesterol in it, and chicken flesh is very fatty food. Don't kid yourself that chicken is lean meat. It is not. There's just as much fat and cholesterol in chicken as there is in beef. Animal muscle is animal muscle. And when you eat it, it raises the level of fat in your blood. There's another problem with eating animal flesh. It has too much protein. I never heard the words too much protein. I thought the more protein, the better. Put them on a high protein diet, make them strong. It ain't so. You better believe there's such a thing called too much protein, and most North Americans suffer from it. First of all, what is protein? Protein is the building block material that you use to make the hard structures of your body. Now, you don't need very much protein during the day. You only need about 30 grams of protein a day, but look how much protein the typical North American consumes. 150 grams of protein. That is too much protein. Why? Because your body can't store protein. That's a really long video, but you guys get the point. So back to what I was saying. So that's the first reason why I believe that we should not be consuming meat. And when I found out all this information, I was like, oh, that all makes perfect sense to me. But the second reason why I believe we shouldn't eat meat is just because of how disgusting it really is. The animals shit all over themselves. There's canker sores, there's pus, steroids, growth hormones, cancer, disease in general. These animals are not healthy and they don't take care of them at all. There's a tolerance of a certain amount of poop and pus that is allowed to be on the meat for them to sell. And in stores, they resell meat that's gone bad by changing the packaging label and putting blood on it to make the gray go away and they mix it with other meat. There's also a thing called meat glue, which is typically made out of pig and they glue different parts of meat chunks together to make it look more appetizing for people to buy it. Ugh. This stuff is so nasty. And when you go into the meat section at the grocery store, it just smells so disgusting. It's just a bunch of rotting body parts. They say to treat your body as a garden, not a graveyard, and I totally agree with that. And you could say, oh no, I get my meat grass-fed, kosher, free range from special farms that take good care of their animals, they're clean, they're not sick. But all of that stuff is just lies. I've seen videos where private investigators go to farms like that and there's really no difference between those farms and the other farms. And they all also get sent to the same, same slaughterhouses. So it's not really any different at all. It's just marketing to make us think that we're being better by getting that type of meat or that type of eggs or whatever. But really it's not. They just fool us in so many ways. And it's just time that we really see what's going on and not be tricked by their lies or their marketing because it's all marketing even like packages you see a package and you're like oh well this one looks nice oh it looks like there's a nice cow on there so it's better i want to get it oh this one's in a glass bottle it must be better when really it's not and i have some videos on my phone that i want to watch with you guys it's nothing sad i promise it's just more reasons why i decided not to consume meat for six years one thing i know is that if people knew what happened in the production of their food they wouldn't eat meat so one of the things that we would hit every day was past nodules, tumors, cysts. It was something that we would hit on a daily basis. Having people? worked in a supermarket chain, I was I saw this firsthand every single day. So here's every one that's running the shoulder blade. Oh, yeah, that is what I remember in the butchery. It comes out like a thick toothpaste. I remember that every single day. And that's Every day. To hear you had that experience yeah. all the way over there because in the UK exactly the same. This isn't yeah. even the. Um, this isn't even in the US. Basis. And don't those people who say it's. Imagine uh, the US. It's not my butcher does this. No. You, they need to open their eyes because yeah. the fair butcher's being honest with them. We know. Yeah. We both know. Mm -hmm. and, and any yeah. honest butcher's going to admit yeah. it. They're not going to want to tell the public because it's going to affect their business. Yeah. But it is a fact. And me working in multiple butcheries, I saw these common trends across the board. So I know that it wasn't just isolated to it. the one that I was working in. It was across the board for me. One cheat we used to have is uh, um, we perhaps had some fresh blood, maybe from a vac pack seal or, or f from any other uh, meat product. And you can see here we've got the one mince uh, that's fresher than the other. So in order to be able to continue to sell that, we, we maybe add a little bit of a colour to it with some little bit of a blood. Yeah. So you can see the uh, 
meet it, all starting to begin to look the same colour, so you're losing the brown and it's becoming redder and redder. And if you continue to mix that, or if you minced it again, put it through the mincer, it'll all come out bright, shiny, and fresh looking. So you can continue to sell it as fresh. That was the number one way to increase yield. So customers would think they're getting something fresh, but very often it would be cycles of old mints that have been run through again and again and again with fresh stuff to basically disguise the product in order to sell it. Yum yum! <laughs> uh, here's another video. the world is disturbing <laughs> but it's okay because we are becoming more aware and making better decisions and not doing this stuff anymore or I mean not consuming this stuff Ugh, first of all that poor cow going through that pain with no painkillers just slitting it open and letting all that come out second of all that's the animal then that people are eating. That sick animal who has all of this stuff wrong with his body. Ew, this stuff is just really gross and I didn't always know about it my whole life. But once I found out about it, I decided like I don't want to eat that stuff anymore. And that's why I just wanted to share with you guys this stuff because I know maybe not all of us are aware of it. And then maybe some of us are. And if you are, it's your decision on what you want to do. But this is just some of my thoughts and I just think that that stuff is really gross and I don't think that it's cool that the media and these companies use marketing to fool us into thinking that things are what they are not. So I just want to spread awareness on this because I wish I would have found out earlier in my life so I could eat better and not eat that because it just truly is very disgusting. Another reason why I decided I don't want to consume meat is I found out that they make People who are in prison watch, meaning they were in prison but they're out of it now and they're just on like house watch, that they make them work in the slaughterhouses and if they decide that they don't want to do it, they put them back in prison. And they also make people from Mexico work in these slaughterhouses and pays them 49 cents an hour. And these people get PTSD, uh, trauma, nightmares and then they go home to their families and since they were in such like a toxic environment all day at work literally killing they go and treat their families bad so they beat their wives they beat their children and i just think that that's really unfair and i think that the people who are in power above really take advantage of these innocent people and i don't agree with that and i don't want to support it and most of the time these slaughterhouses are by poor communities and all of the waste from the slaughterhouses are going into these neighborhoods the air is toxic and these people are less fortunate and they can't afford to go live in a better community, a better environment, and I just don't think that's fair at all. And the last reason why I decided to not consume meat is thou shall not kill. God didn't say thou shall not kill humans, he said thou shall not kill in general. And someone in the movie had said something that really stood out to me and it was if we're able to go to heaven after killing trillions of animals every year, then what does it take to go to hell? And that was like, dang. That is so true, like the standards are low, huh? We need to evolve the way we do things on this earth as we have the resources to do so. Death should never be the answer. I could go on and on all day about why I don't consume meat, but I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible. But I love you guys and I'll see you in the next episode.